Hey there, I'm Justine Buick, the NCLEX tutor, where we help nursing students pass the NCLEX and their nursing exams. I'm a registered nurse and my background is in med surge nursing and education. Today, I'm going to be talking about health and physical assessment part one. This is a nursing fundamentals topic. It doesn't matter where in the world you work or what kind of floor you work on, you have to know how to do an assessment. So I'm going to be using the Nugget Pages and this is the book that I wrote and that we use with our students to review content. We're going to start off at the very, very beginning health and physical assessment. And really this is when you get your patient and you go and see them for the first time and you do your assessment on them. And typically what happens when you go in to see your patient is, you know, you try to start asking them some of your assessment questions that you have and then they start asking you questions like, oh, can you help me up to the bathroom? Or can you uh, grab that thing over there for me? So you start to get, you know, pulled in a different direction and what you really wanted to do when you uh, uh, first went in there and what you thought. So just know that you're gonna have to roll with it and you really are assessing your patient as they are uh, asking you things to do. So just keep that in mind and uh, just kind of go with the flow. So uh, with this right here, we're gonna start off with the principles at the very beginning. So the nurse, that's you, you spend the most time with the client, you have the most complete picture, and you uh, communicate the client's needs to the rest of the healthcare team the most effectively because you are with the patient the most. There's three areas of assessment that you'll be doing on your patients, body, mind, and spirit. So body is assessing those physical symptoms, mind is assessing their mental health, and spirit is assessing for any religious or spiritual beliefs. So you need a framework to guide your nursing care. So we call it the clinical judgment model, and it's when you use critical thinking to help uh, guide how you're going to take care of patients. And I know that your instructors, or at least some of them, definitely make critical thinking or that concept sound very mysterious. And really it's not. It's super easy to understand uh, like what actually critical thinking is. What's hard is when uh, knowing uh, all the content and that your patients are really complicated and they come with a lot of issues and then putting that all together to make uh, decisions on what to do. But we're gonna go over the main clinical judgment models. There's three of them here. There's the nursing process, which is probably what you used at school. There's Tanner's clinical judgment model. This is really the easiest one to remember and frequently one that if you're an actual nurse on the floor that you would be just really thinking about and using. And then there's the NCLEXs, so NCSBN's clinical judgment measurement model. And all of these are really mean the same thing. They're just said in slightly different ways. To give you an overall view of what critical thinking is and using this judgment model to help you with your patients is let's just look at this middle one. So you notice things about your patient. So that sign and symptom data that you gathered, maybe some labs and some diagnostic tests. So that's really taking in all of that information. So what do you notice? What do you notice that's normal? What do you notice that's abnormal? And that's critical thinking right there. And then the next step is interpreting that data. So what does that data actually mean? How do you interpret that sign and symptom data? How do you interpret those labs and that diagnostic test and what those patients are telling you? Then the next step is responding to that. So what do you do? What are your interventions? Um, uh, what kind of teaching would you do? What kind of medications would you give? And then the last step is just reflecting. So what worked? What didn't work? Uh, did they understand the teaching? Did they not understand the teaching? Did that intervention actually make a difference or do we need to go back and try something else to see if that works? That's critical thinking. That's the nursing uh, process. And uh, it's the ADPI assess, diagnose, plan, implement, evaluate is the exact same thing. It's just said in a different way. So assessing, getting that assessment data. Uh, your nursing diagnoses, we're really not using those in the clinical setting. They're, they're not asked about on the NCLEX. Um, we would call those problems in the clinical setting, and they might say that on, the, um, on your tests. And you might get nursing diagnoses on your uh, tests at school, but not on the NCLEX. 
what is your plan for your patient? So that's your responding. What are those short-term or long-term goals? What would you implement? And then evaluating, which is the same as reflecting. Now, NCSBN calls noticing that sign and symptom data and the labs and diagnostic tests, they call that recognizing cues, but no one talks like that. So I just want you to be aware if your teachers do talk about recognizing cues, like what does that actually mean? It just means noticing that sign and symptom data, what's normal, what's abnormal, um, and then analyzing those cues and prioritizing, interpreting or analyzing, and then uh, prioritize what's the most important thing you should be concerned about or what's the most important thing that you should do. Um, generating solutions, those are your expected outcomes. So what kind of things do you think you should do? So responding and then take action and then evaluate your outcomes, which seems um, pretty in line with everything else. Reflect what worked, what didn't work. And I want you to know that when you're doing the NCLEX Next Gen and you're getting those types of practice questions where they're, they are those unfolding case studies, well, each one of those unfolding case studies has six questions to it and it actually addresses every part of this um, clinical judgment model. Your first question is gonna be about recognizing cues, your second one is analyzing those cues. Your third question is going to be about prioritizing. Your fourth one is about getting some interventions, generating solutions. Your fifth one is actually doing those uh, interventions. And then your sixth one is evaluating. How did that work out? So that's exactly uh, the uh, six steps for the judgment model and then the six types of uh, questions that you'll get in those unfolding case studies. All right, but in order to do all of that, you have to know content, okay? So taking care of patients is all about critical thinking, using strategies uh, for your test questions, which actually the strategies are like critical thinking skills, and then knowing content. So how do you study diseases and conditions? So the first thing you need to study is the patho what, or the cause or and risk factor. So how does this disease wreck havoc on the body. What caused that disease and are there any risk factors? And if you know that, it's gonna make the rest of the stuff to remember so much easier if you know what a disease is. The next thing you study is the signs and symptoms. So how does that disease present itself? The next thing you study is the diagnostic tests and the labs that go along with it. So that's really going to be the um, way that the healthcare provider really diagnoses those diseases is really by the diagnostic tests in the labs, along with the sign and symptom data for sure. And then the last thing you study is your interventions. So what kind of nursing care do you do? What kind of teaching? Are there any medical interventions that you have to help with? So if the patient's having surgery or they have chest tubes or they're getting a thoracentesis and then giving medications. And you can see here, if you don't know what causes a disease, you're like, well, I don't know what causes it. Well, how are you supposed to teach anything or do some nursing care or which meds to give? So that's why it's really important to understand the causes and just a very simple patho of diseases. If you see this, a clinical pathway or a care plan, uh, that's just a plan that everyone agrees to and it's guided by evidence-based practice for best client care. So when you go in to see your patient, you know, what's the whole purpose of doing an assessment? Well, obviously you have to gather data, especially the abnormal data, and then you're going to help heal the client or prevent them from getting worse or getting sick. And then you also want to do your assessment because you are going to need to notify the healthcare provider of any immediate complications or changes in their condition. And that's in order for you to update the care plan. So that's why this first part of like noticing things and recognizing cues and being able to analyze them. That's what some of the practice questions are about. Like, can you recognize when there's a problem? And we call that the killer answer. What is the, like the worst thing about this um, situation? And the healthcare provider can either be a doctor, a nurse practitioner, or a physician's assistant. Now, when you go to see your patient, you do have to do two client identifiers. So definitely ask what their name is. And then typically we do the date of birth. I mean, technically you could ask uh, the social security number, phone number, or address. Um, however, you know, there's people that have the same name that live at the same address. So name and date of birth seems to be the two most common things that you would ID the, ID the patient with. Now there's um, these types of assessment data, there's subjective data, and then there's objective data. 
and uh, subjective is what the client tells you. So pain, that's subjective, right? Because only the patient can feel it. You can't feel their pain. Objective data is what anyone can observe, so the vital signs. Anyone can look, log in and look at a set of vital signs for the patient. Now, the two main types of assessment here are focused assessment and a comprehensive assessment. So focused is focus. So it focuses on the client's immediate concern and is done when the patient has a very specific complaint or there's immediate information um, that's needed. And then a comprehensive assessment is your entire head to toe assessment. So that's just going through the body systems, head to toe. So neuro, respiratory, cardiac, GI, renal, musculoskeletal, skin. And then you typically do the assessment in this order. So you inspect, you look at the patient, then you palpate. Um, so pressing down on, um, on them, percuss, so that's the tapping, and then auscultate where you listen with a stethoscope. Then when you do the abdominal assessment, it goes in this order. So it goes from least invasive to most invasive. So you inspect, then you auscultate, percuss, and then palpate. And that's because you don't want to uh, upset the stomach too much or be pushing down on the stomach. And then you're supposed to listen with the stethoscope. And then of course they have hyperactive bowel sounds because you were just pressing on them. So that's why it's least to most invasive. And some other things that you're going to look at just to get an overall picture of your client is the labs. So the CBC, the BMP, the CMP, um, any labs that are specific to their problem. You can look at imaging diagnostic tests. So x-ray, CT scans, MRIs, those are very common. I always, always would read the medical and surgical history and physical from the healthcare provider. So they always write like a paragraph or a page long thing about the patient when they came in and seen the patient because you want to know what does the doctor uh, know about the patient. And then you also want to look at the medication administration record, the MAR, obviously because that's the meds that they're on and whatever meds they're on, well, that's a condition that they have. So that'll give you some idea of what kind of conditions they're dealing with. And typically assessments are done in the post-op area, very focused assessments done every five to 15 minutes. Um, the ICU intensive care unit is done um, every one to two hours and probably obviously a focused and then you know more of a comprehensive too. Progressive or a step down unit every two to four hours and then a med surge floor is every four to eight hours. And I would say eight would probably be too long. So, you know, every four hours. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you are interested in getting the nugget pages, you can go to the website to purchase that, the NCLEXTutor.com. And we also have a whole team of tutors that are available to help with tutoring. So thanks for watching. Bye.